What a weekend. What a long weekend of band. Yeah, man. Everybody got a little. Some of y'all got a little sunburnt, a little toasty. I was, I was getting ready to say it was. It was an amazing time, minus the fact that I completely screwed up and got sunburnt on Friday. <laughs> I did I, not. I, I was good. I was good to go. There was a lot of. There was a lot of lobster esque uh, members and staff members too. Oh yeah. I, I didn't even think about the sun. Like I was wearing jeans the whole day, so like I'm not thinking about getting sunburned if I'm still able to wear jeans outside. So, but, but you know. I will take that over the rain or the cold oh. anytime. If WGF Finals was like that every year, glorious. Yep. I'll bring some FPS 30 next time. Be fine. Great time. Amazing all weather. The, I mean, all the California teams are like, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we brought it with us. <laughs> California, uh, Texas, and Florida. It's like, yeah, right. we've been doing this all year. Well, before we hop right into recapping the weekend, doing a debrief, if you want to call it that. Go over our predictions, what we thought, things we got wrong, things we got right. Just our general thoughts about how everything shook out. Welcome, everyone, to the Aged Out Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Fantini, and with me, as always, is... Evan Worrell. And before we get into all that good stuff, check out LoneStarPercussion.com. They've been a sponsor of the podcast and YouTube channel for a while now. I think definitely over a year. Uh, Use the discount code AGEDOUT. Save yourself $10 on any order of $50 or more. Everybody wins. Uh, head over to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on podcast services, let us know what you think in the comments about anything we've said here today. Shoot us a message on Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want to do. We love interacting with all of our, all of our listeners. Yeah. Listeners. That's the right word. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do any more spiel than that. We're trying to keep it to a minimum and get to the meat and potatoes of this. So social media, Lone Star, YouTube, blah, blah. Here we go. Right on. Also, uh, before we get into that like our weekend too, I did want to take the chance to, first of all, welcome all the recent age outs, everybody who just finished up, mm-hmm. uh, no longer drumming and finished up your competitive career. It's not so bad being on this side of things. It's actually kind of fun. Yep. Uh, whether you're going to go teach or just be a spectator and a supporter of the activity. And I know Mike and I talked about too, just driving and walking around. Uh, super thankful for everyone that like came and said hi to us while we were walking around the lot or at the shows. It was pretty surreal, pretty humbling. Um, yeah, definitely. To have like people support what we're doing, we really, really appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys continue to enjoy it, and that we're just able to, I don't know, have fun. No, so. yeah, being back in live band world again, kind of. We saw a lot of growth, or what we saw as a lot of growth, like being locked in our homes and stuff, putting out content. But it kind of made it real that people actually are listening and all that stuff, and enjoy what we do. So yeah, it was great me- meeting everybody that we did. We actually got to meet a few of the guests we had on that we'd never met before, which was right. awesome. Uh, I think you saw, I didn't bump into Macintosh, but you did. And it was funny. You were like, dude, you're taller than I thought you were going to be. Well, he said, uh, he said I was more buff <laughs> than he thought I was. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> which was funny. I'll have to catch uh, him at a show. Yep. Just met him. Uh, ben Piles. Never mm-hmm. met him before. Uh, there were some others. Um, I don't think I'd talked to Alan Unkst in person before until then. No, so, I hadn't either. So it was pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Good times. All right. Uh, yeah. Do you want to start with Friday? Uh, yeah. The let's lot just day, move, or do you just want to go? Let's start with the first day we were there. We'll talk about some semifinals, who made it into semis, what we saw, initial thoughts, walking around the lot, all that good stuff. So, you want to start, or you want me to go? Uh, I'm pulling up the semis. Oh, okay. Uh, well, scores real quick, but well, yeah. So we got we got up yeah. there Friday morning in time to catch everybody in the lot, um, which was awesome. I'm just gonna like kind of go through. Well, before you do that, one second, before you go into that, I will just start with, and him, Evan and I have said this to a few of our friends and everything after we'd been there, checked out a couple groups, was like, man, this is my first live band show in two years since 2019 DCI finals, I think, finals weekend. And I was like, man, the stream hides a lot of stuff. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, watching people (laughs) on flow marching. And even just even when you're inside, inside in person, it's gonna hide some ticks. Just the boominess of the room when you're outside and exposed like that, you can you can catch some stuff. Nobody was like playing perfect. I'll say that. nobody was. Um, nobody. Zero groups we walked up in front no. of were like, wow, they're amazingly almost perfect. There were ticks everywhere. So yeah, all around ticks to be had, but all around good drumming to be had as well. Um, caught red wave. When I got there, mm-hmm. uh, my, my buddy Joe Avery's the director there, arranges designs, and he was talking about 
just uh, I know that they had designed kind of for open class and got uh, reclassified is what Tim Fairbanks told me the word is not <laughs> not bumped and not promoted, but they were reclassified to world class. And I think accurately so. I mean, if you make I semifinals, so too. if you make semifinals, you're you're in the right you're in the right field. One hundred percent. So I think that that'll be something they can build upon moving forward. Uh, obviously, an attraction for next year to to recruit and stuff. But they were playing well. Um, just some of those groups at the bottom weren't super consistent uh, that I saw, like Red Wave, Strike, Dark Sky, Connexus, Redline. Like some stuff sounded really, 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 really good, uh, but just not super consistent, like rep to rep, which kind of does matter. <laughs> so. and, well, speaking on the consistency thing for a second, just to piggyback on that, something else that was interesting that I hadn't considered until i saw it in person was there were a few groups we walked up to like uh vigilantes um oh who were the first those earlier groups that went on in semis uh like the first half of the of the placements well, was all those that I just named <laughs> huh plus red light well, yeah all those what, that i just all, named yeah exactly plus but blue knights rhythmic force vigilantes Cap when City. they started everybody played rougher initially and they kind of eased into it and it was almost like, I forget who pointed it out to me. It might have been Dan Shack, And he was just like, well, think about it. They haven't performed in front of people without a mask on, really, in a while. So this is like a right. real lot lot with viewers and people checking them out. And maybe some nerves going on. And then as they got drumming more and more, most of those groups progressed and played better and better and better the longer they were drumming. So that 100%. was 100%. Hadn't considered and actually, that at all. I had talked to some people they were there on prelims day too. And they had just talked about kind of how some people had pretty rough lots. And then I think semifinals, they were mentioned like, Oh, they sound way better today. And then my finals, like, Oh, they sound, you kind of ease into it and like realize what's going on. I'm sure there were a bunch of people that literally, especially in the high school realm have just never had a lot of experience like that. And then you get to go to Dayton where there's literally thousands of people (laughs) in the lot watching you. So, yep. Uh, so yeah, but uh, semifinalists, congrats. Uh, I, speaking of like predictions, I had posted kind of like mine and Mike's. Mike had the finals, and then I had my, my full predictions. Obviously, the only group that I missed from stopping at um, prelims was Blue Knights, which I'll talk about more in a minute, too. Um, AQ did not make it past prelims, which honestly makes pretty much no sense to me uh looking yeah, at the recap from prelims too it's pretty clear why if you yeah, look at it it's uh, wild it, yeah one person just kind of called it and they're the, the two guys in that caption did not agree at all no um, they were one very of them far judges apart. one of them judges a lot and one of them judges not a lot so you're just like i i think the prelims panel is the most important panel of the weekend you have mm-hmm. I, I feel like you have to have been around the activity and be paying attention because you don't get the groups in any order. It's just random. So you got to kind of have a, I feel like a really good pulse of what's going on within the activity and seen some groups and like judged a lot so that you kind of have a, a good basis of where to start. Cause I think that AQ pretty much got shafted. They, I think they should have for sure been in semifinals. I won't say finals, but they, yeah. they should have advanced the semis. They were definitely um, good enough to be performing on the second day. So, yeah. But other four semifinalists, uh, I obviously hit. If people check on there, two, Dark Sky, Red Line, Strike, Connexus. It, and here's the deal. So when I, we made the predictions and we put them out there, we got some fun DMs. Some people a uh, little maybe annoyed. I... And I probably, probably you could say this too, but you can speak for yourself. I didn't put anybody anywhere based on like my opinion of like the group. I was trying to be as objective as I could based on YouTube videos and recaps and trying to get it right as yep. close as I could, not like picking people that I like, which I think ultimately when you look at it speaks for itself. We got pretty close. <laughs> we were we were pretty close there, and we'll get, we'll speak more we'll talk on about that when we misses. get to the finals yeah. results, but. I'll reiterate what we reiterated or like what we said, sorry, redundancy, uh, what we said in our predictions podcast of we haven't seen everybody. Like I ran into Taha working with Monarch and I was like, dude, we didn't, I didn't know if you all existed this year. Why was there nothing out there? And he was like, it's just the nature of the circuit with some COVID restrictions and just nobody took their cell phones out and 
recorded us. He goes, there was nothing. And so, like, we hadn't seen them, hadn't seen much from Infinity, hadn't seen much from United. I hadn't seen Blue Knights at all, hadn't seen Strike at all. Like, there's just so, we don't have time, and it's just not... It was kind of funny. I got a bunch of messages from some Blue Knights members after they had already made finals, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but uh, I didn't hear much from them before finals. But I was—I mean, I was basing my prediction on the fact that I, I think when I looked back, that they hadn't made finals since 2013. Yeah, uh, I mean, in 2018 they were second to last in prelims, and in 2019 they were like 18th or 19th in yeah. semis. So, and at that point in the year. They had no videos out, so I'm kind of justifying myself you're, a little bit. You're which doing is it fun. off history. That's what I yeah. did with Monarch. That's what I did with United. <laughs> like you go on where they typically finish because I hadn't seen hardly anything. But kudos, I mean, yeah. kudos to them. Obviously, congratulations it's for awesome. sure. Well deserved, well earned. Um, also, just super happy to see different teams make it in and get the chance to perform at finals, which is really really cool. Um, do you want to move into finals and then our kind of rundown, or do you want to? Talk about Scholastic World a little bit, or um, let's do Scholastic World, and then we'll do Independent World Finals. Okay. So Saturday Finals Day, we did a little mix of in and out, in and out. We got there in time to catch the last four Scholastic World groups. So that would have been Arcadia, and then Dartmouth. And it was funny after Dartmouth went on, we we're like, "Dang, man, they might have just played themselves in a silver medal." Uh, yeah. contention mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh avon went on and we were just like holy crap avon may have just played themselves in the gold medal because i mean it was just they, <laughs> the kids were throwing down both those groups um, played their butts off it was awesome yeah and the scores were pretty pretty freaking close in that two three range um and then we saw chino and chino had a great show i do after it was done though in my heart i just was like i just think that avon had the better show a hundred percent I, I, I 100% agree with that. Like, like you said, I'm just like, man, Dartmouth just played amazing, and Dartmouth's show was exciting. There was cool stuff. They always, it's like a stage show, like a theater show they put on every year. The costuming is always amazing. Like, fun to watch. Super high energy. They played amazingly well on the floor. The crowd threw babies. Avon came on, did the exact same thing with the speed bags, and like, if you haven't seen was, Avon's that show, was killer. <laughs> if you haven't seen Avon's show, go watch it. And I I was skeptical going into their performance because we had caught them in the lot. And Evan and I both said to each other, "Ah, they're not playing very well, dude. Like they are, they were, they they were were not hella nervous. (laughs) I'm sure the the lot riding on it. They were not playing well outside. So we're like, all right, well, let's see what happens when like kind of muscle memory kicks in. There's not people 10 feet away from them. They're just kind of in their element on the move. And I'm sure a lot of that stuff, like their snare feature going up and down the stairs, they probably didn't practice that just standing there that often. And it was crazy when they were on the stairs in the show, it was way cleaner than it was standing still in the lot. Oh, yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah. well, they turned it on, they got in their element, and they threw down, and it was awesome. Crowd threw babies once again. And in my brain, in my opinion, Dartmouth and Avon had better shows than Chino did. Objectively, just from like an effect standpoint, from a, a crowd enjoyment standpoint – um, I I prefer those two shows. I thought there was a chance. Yeah, well, like, I mean, Avon did win both yes. effect captions. So I mean, there <laughs> you go. Bad. They also won yeah. overall. So it's like Correct. that wasn't yeah, shocking yeah. at all. And Chino came out, had a good performance. The show, in my opinion, and your opinion from what you told me, wasn't as good as the other two groups potentially. And it was like they got beat by Avon, and Dartmouth was only like less than a point behind them in third. So they was almost like point, got jumped. I think it was like point two. Yeah. They almost got like jumped that. by both groups, really really which if that um, would have happened, I probably wouldn't have disagreed with it. Yeah. Um, just kudos to Scholastic World killing it. It's I crazy. just love seeing the high school kids throw down. Um, also, kudos to Avon High School for the triple crown of indoor this weekend or yeah. over these weekends winning – Scholastic World Color Guard, Scholastic World Percussion, and Scholastic World Wins. Uh, yeah, what a program. <laughs> and I saw a funny comment. Someone was like, if they win BOA 2022, they automatically get bumped to uh, DCI or Independent <laughs> World or something like that. <laughs> and I want to backtrack for a minute. I know I was like sounding like I might have been poo-pooing on Chino. 
they're high school kids. We don't want to be too hard on any of them. They're all playing at crazy high levels that I couldn't have hoped to have done at at that age. And it's just we're splitting hairs. All and, three were and amazing. obviously too. California had its own obstacles outside of a lot of the rest of the country. <laughs> yeah, and do you want to get into that discussion we had with your buddy Joe th- about like where finals is at any uh, point on this? We can if I, you want. I figure why not. I mean, we're talking you about do high it right school. now. Yeah, screw it. We're right. talking about high school, so I think it makes the most sense for high school too. I mean, it makes sense for the world group. So my buddy Joe, um, we got to talk with. He's one of the California groups, and we were just talking about final and this and that and this and that and the expense that it costs for those groups to come out here every single year which some of them don't come every single year or even every other year um and i think it's a conversation to open up to be had where you consider having finals in california or i don't know even texas or somewhere closer a midpoint like once every three to four years uh it would do a couple things for high schools, like there are some high schools out there in California and that side of the country, not just California, Arizona, whatever, um, that are really, really good, but just not financially able to make that trek yep. over here. So if you had it somewhere closer to the West Coast, like once every three or four years, it basically would give everyone during their high school career the opportunity to make a less financially stringent trip. Um, to where during your freshman to senior year, you'd probably get the opportunity to perform at WGI Finals. Like, I know, I, I don't think Etiwanda came, and I don't think Vista Murrieta came, which were, I think were the another top three or four groups in the SCPA local circuit they have. Yep. So you know they would have been in finals um, for WGI. But I think having it out there makes makes a lot of sense just to kind of help alleviate those California groups, West Coast groups people on that side of the country yeah i think it would just open the opportunity up more it's so i think expensive. he said it was 40 grand yeah. in front of them to make i was the getting trip. ready to add that he told us it it was like forty thousand dollars to Which get is out just mind-blowing and it's the, i mean that's an expense that you have to pass along to the kids and fees yeah i mean fundraise i guess maybe some of it if as much as you can yeah but, i mean yeah if, if it was in california like maybe a group some of these groups out here wouldn't go but you know I mean, even okay. even That's if you is, do, it is what it is. Even if you do one once every four years, it's out west, and then that would give the groups that are out east three years to fundraise and save up more money for the trip out west that one year, right. and it would allow the schools out west I mean, it, that yeah. would possibly not have to travel and save money for one year, and it would allow all those kids to at least, when their schools don't have the money to come to WGI Finals, they would be able to at least experience it one out of their four years there in high school. And I'm not oblivious to like economics and the cost of living across different parts of the country. So, yeah, I think about that too. But, yeah, I mean, let's just be real. Is it fair that we have it a date every year? Probably not. Probably um, not. Probably not. And but. the weather would probably, probably be beautiful out there. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> be amazing. So. 